Today, we're going to talk about how to create a drag and drop custom Discord bot using BuildShip and Railway, and it's custom, so there may be some AI involved here to get everything you want with as little code as possible. Let's get right into it. First, you'll need to set up a Railway account. This is Railway right over here. It allows you to just deploy open source software or any software really without thinking about how to do it. It's great for you low code, no coders out there. The setup that we're using is powered by discord.js and I have an estimate here of how, so you get a $5 credit for getting the free trial and it'll cover about 70 cents every month. So that's around seven months or so with a 24 seven discord bot hosting that's drag and drop and completely free. All right, that's part one, that's railway. Step two, next we're gonna go into BuildShip. BuildShip is a way to visually set up your backend. So this is what we're gonna use to make it as no code as possible. Stick around if you wanna improve template. If you want more of these drag and drop blocks, we're making more of them available. We're making more templates. All you have to do is subscribe. Once you set up that account, next you're gonna set up your Discord bot. <clears throat> Once you set up your Discord bot, you can go here. I'll grab the link, stick it in the training. Once you set up your Discord bot, um, you'll need to take note of your client ID and your token. We'll look more into that later, but essentially where you find the client ID is right in the general information tab. It's uh, the client ID. And then when you go to the bot tab, there's a token there that you copy for the first time or you reset it, and that is your bot token. Once you copy the template, by the way, I'll show you where it is. Let's go to templates. I created this because when I searched for Discord, um, all the templates were broken. So I made a template that's a little bit of flavor that I like, which is right here, the Discord bot, no code, low code. We're gonna press deploy now. Uh, the link is in the description. And when you deploy it, um, you're pretty much good to go. You're gonna land right in here. You're gonna get this drag and drop Discord JS node. Is fill in your client ID, your gateway intents. I'll show you what the gateway intents are. Um, if I go to the GitHub, these are the gateway intents. So you can learn more about it at this link over here. The gateway intents are ways to set up um, what you want to listen to as live events that come through the server. The Discord JS, the main things you need to drag and drop are endpoints for the interaction and the message. So I'll show you here that we have so we have a build chip account set up here it is just to show you that this works what i did was i copy and pasted using this button right here the endpoint for my build chip endpoint which is this i put it in the railway variable right here i put this for the interaction that's what we're about to do and then if i go back to this endpoint right here what I've done here is I've used their drag and drop API call. So let me walk through how this works because this is more so for low coders, no coders. An API call, you'll need to use the post because what we're doing here is we are doing a callback on an interaction. So I'll show you how to do this stuff. So if we go to the docs for here, and then I'm gonna go to interaction, receiving an interaction. When you're receiving an interaction, you are receiving it from this URL. So you're getting an interaction ID and the interaction token. And all of that is actually set up for you when you use this template. So you're gonna receive those things through BuildShip um, right here. So if I go to the URL, so I'm dragging and dropping, so I'll show you what that is, this API call. I'm gonna click that and it just drags and drops it right here. I'm just gonna delete that for now. And if we go to the URL, um, so I'm using the interaction ID, which is already set up for you. It's coming in through the Discord bot that's hosted on Railway. Same with the interaction token. It's all coming in, and you just set it up to follow this, um, this node right here. <clears throat> and then what you can do is when you start setting these up, you can save it to your library, so it becomes even more drag and drop. Save so much time. For the body, what we're doing is we're formatting a response to the interaction. So if I go back to the Discord docs, this is the response to the interaction right here. So I just copy that. I paste that into the body right there. And you can, you can customize whatever response you want to do. All you have to do is follow these docs. 
and choose, for example, what's the type of the response I want to send, what's the data. So for example, if we just scroll up a bit, that said type four. So here's the type and the data, the interaction response object. That's how we read this. So if I go to the type, number four means channel message with source. There are other things like the defer channel message with source and that describes what it is and you can choose exactly what you want or even a modal respond to an actual interaction with a pop-up modal in Discord. You have complete control over that. All you have to do is get used to reading documentation like this and then putting information in these blocks right here. Um, the content type application JSON is always important. We want to await true and that's how we set up an API call and I'm going to go on my Discord server where I've installed it. To get the install link for your Discord, you go to the, uh, develop, the Discord developer portal. There's a new section under the settings now called installation, and you get an install link all for you that you can share to your customers, your clients, and they install the link for your bot. It's so great. It's so easy now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test my bot by doing a slash command. So I got a response back. Okay, it just says fail because of how because of how I set it up. By the way, um, everything works properly. So if I go to the API call, see unexpected end of JSON. But either way, you get the request that comes in, and that's it. You get to do whatever you want with this information and set up your bot however you want to do it. I'll show you guys how to do this. So if I do, if I go to the docs, and I want to, for example, do. Hmm, Assign a role, that's a great use case. Assign a role to a member when something happens. So if I go to the channel, let's go to the channel, or actually, let's do create a channel invite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy everything here. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna go to build ship, I'm gonna paste it as additional context. Then I'm gonna say, given the, given the required inputs, I want to create a Discord invite link when a user is created and return um, the invite Discord data. Check this out. We're going to generate. Boom, just like that. So we have the channel ID. Um, it's asking for the mask a max age, max uses, duration of the invite before expiry, max uses is a temporary, is a unique, the target type. So these are the actual, all the settings, by the way. <laughs> that is all here. It set it set up all for you. You just need the bot token. And there you have it. That's it. So then you would just need a channel ID. And this depends on your use case. So for example, if you're using a platform like Medusa.js to create a um, channel when an order is created, and you can do that all here just by asking the AI to set up the nodes. And now the next thing, if you want to be able to customize the exact code itself, I'm trying to make it so it's easier and more accessible to like designers, marketers, product managers. So that's what this flow is. But if you want to customize it even further, that's the step right here. When you copy the template, what you want to do is go to your account. There's a section called feature flags. When you go to feature flags, you want to turn on template service eject. So what that allows us to do is when you copy the template, you can go to settings and what you'll be able to do is you'll have an option here to disconnect the template and then you can reconnect it to your own GitHub repo and it'll push all that code straight into the repo. You just need to turn on that feature flag. So once you do that, uh, you can then create a code space. We go into the index and you're able to get autocomplete and you can just customize any of this code whenever you need it. Just to call out a few things how this works. So whenever you're, you're using Railway and you can do the process environment ENB and you can get any variable name in Railway and it'll be stored here. What you need to do is in the command line and terminal, you would type railway. You would need to first do npm install global at railway slash CLI. I think this is a new one, so I might as well do this. And then that'll give you the ability to do a railway login. Once you log in, you'll select the project that you want. Once you select the project that you want, then you could do railway run npm run start. 
So that tells Railway to run an NPM run command, which is how you run most projects like this. And what that will do is run this code in this code space with all the variables. Okay, some things that I'm gonna walk through here are, so this code right here is for the intents. You don't really need to do anything. We set up a default set of intents if you didn't put anything in the variable. And this is a guide to customize the template. And this is how we set up the rest of the, how to read uh, the comma separated list of intents that you want. This needs to work because there's a lot of big int numbers that are part of the Discord JS library. And this changes how that works. And then the main pattern you're really doing here is you're setting up the client from Discord JS, but then you're doing client on event, events dot, and you just choose what you want. You forward it to your serverless endpoint, whatever that is. And we've set that up as environment variables and railway, and that's it. That's the same pattern. 